Buenas noches a todos. On behalf of Sones de Mexico Ensemble, I want to wish you the best for the upcoming new year. Tonight's presentation is brought to you by the National Museum of Mexican Art, and we want to thank Carlos, Jorge, Thelma, Barbara, and the rest of the team at the National Museum of Mexican Art that made it possible for us to reach you at your homes tonight. Tonight's presentation was pre-recorded by Sones de Mexico Ensemble in a film studio during the pandemic. We used a professional video and audio crew so that it would look and sound very good on your screens, but we still wanted to bring you a live interactive component. So for tonight's premiere, all of our band members are watching right now. Feel free to post your comments and questions on the chat during the show, and we will write you right back. This is a feature that we don't even have in our live concert. So we hope you enjoy it. Let's begin. Welcome to Beyond the Music, a musical geography of Mexico. My name is Juan Diaz, and I'm one of the co-founders of the group Sones de Mexico Ensemble. Uh, this is a nonprofit organization that we founded in 1994 to promote a greater appreciation of Mexico's traditional and regional music and culture. This presentation, uh, with the aid of this map, six talented multi-instrumentalist musicians, and a collection of over 50 musical instruments uh, will take us through a musical journey uh, through various regional styles of music from Mexico, each with its own ethnic and historical characteristics. We have also added a few additional colors like drums and bass to give it, let's say, that uh, Chicago plugged-in sound. But in general, uh, I will be providing you with a brief introduction before each song, uh, giving you a little context for each style so that we may better appreciate uh, the nuances and the uniqueness of each style. This program was developed with partial funding from the National Endowment for the Arts, also the Illinois Arts Council Agency, the Chicago Department of Cultural Affairs and Special Events, the MacArthur Fund, for Arts and Culture at the Richard A. Driehaus Foundation, the Gaylord and Dorothy Donnelly Foundation, the Chicago Community Trust, and the generosity of individual donors like you who help us make these programs possible. Normally, we take these presentations on the road around the country and we present them in schools, universities, public libraries, and cultural centers. But given the current constraints on live music performance, we decided to go into a movie studio and film this presentation so that we could bring it to you. So we hope you enjoy it. Let's begin. We begin our journey in the center of Mexico, right about here. This was the seat of the ancient Aztec civilization in Mexico and where the capital of Mexico now exists, Mexico City. The name Mexico comes from the uh, Mexica, who was the, the name that the Aztecs gave themselves. And the, uh, the word Mexico means the navel of the moon, Mexico, the center of creation. Uh, in this music uh, that we're going to see with Sones de Mexico, we see some interesting instruments. I'm holding here a teponastli. This is a slit drum made out of a solid piece of wood with a carved bottom and two different tones. We also have this large drum with a skin stretched over the top called the wewet, which means the old one. Uh, our uh, dancer wears these uh, rattles on her feet uh, made from the seeds of a plant. This is called the ayoyotes. And in the beginning of the song, we're going to see her calling upon the four winds to the north, south, east, and west by blowing on a conch shell from the ocean. The very beginning of the song opens with a flute uh, that was made out of clay and it's calling upon the spirits. 
The name of this song is called Shipe, and uh, it means uh, the shedding of the skin. Uh, it was a, one of the deities of the Aztecs, and it's uh, a song of renewal. Enjoy.
That's very powerful music. Um, and well, let's continue with our journey. And now let's go to the Huasteca region, um, right here. This is located in uh, central East Mexico, along the, this range of mountains over here in Eastern Mexico. The Huasteca region is a tropical rainforest. Uh, and the style of music uh, we can hear from here is called son huasteco. Son, uh, spelled S-O-N, is a word that comes from uh, the Latin word for sound, uh, sonus. Uh, the name of Sones de Mexico Ensemble uh, comes from this word. Sones means uh, various styles of son from different parts of Mexico. So son by itself uh, doesn't mean anything uh, all on its own. We always have to pair it up with a regional uh, uh, marker, like the Huasteca. So son huasteco is the sound of the Huasteca region. So we're going to listen to a song now uh, performed on an instrument just like this one. This is called uh, Guitarra Quinta Huapanguera. Uh, and it's an instrument, it's a baritone guitar that was used for, for this style of music. We also have this little companion guitar called the Jarana Huasteca and together they provide the rhythmic backbone for this style of music. We're also going to hear in the singing voice uh, a falsetto that breaks uh, like a yodel at one point and this is very characteristic of this style. The lead instrument in this song is going to be the fiddle and it's very, uh, it's a solo fiddle, very um, uh, ornamented. Uh, the name of the song we're going to hear is called La Petenera and this is a song that talks about uh, maritime themes, about uh, creatures that you may find in the ocean and spirits. Uh, enjoy.
Well, we're beginning to see just how diverse uh, styles of music we can find in Mexico. Uh, let's continue our journey and now we're going to go to northern Mexico, the style of music we call Norteño. And that uh, covers this whole territory in northern Mexico along the, the border with the United States. Uh, Norteño music is very, is, Norteño is a very generic word because it actually encompasses a lot of musical styles, including the polkas, waltzes, shadises, mazurkas, etc. So um, uh, all this music came from Central Europe, uh, brought by immigrants from that part of the world to Mexico, who brought with them instruments such as the, the button accordion uh, and uh, the upright bass, and uh, this instrument that was created in Mexico uh, called the bajo sexto, which is a 12-string guitar, uh, which has a kind of a deep sound. We're going to uh, listen to a little medley of songs. We're going to start with a, with a shotis, uh, which is a French style uh, uh, rhythm uh, uh, honoring the city of Monterrey. Second, uh, we're we'll listening to a polka called La Capsula. And we're going to finish with a style that borrows a little bit from the Huasteca region, but with a completely different spin. It's called the Huapango Norteño. And this one is in a minor key, which is, uh, makes it even more unique. Um, enjoy. <laughs> Monterrey con tu cerro de la silla y con tus rutas de García. Monterrey, Monterrey de mis amores, yo te voy a cantar esta canción por la gracia que tienen tus mujeres. Ellas saben querer de corazón en la plaza Zaragoza. Los domingos se pasean las muchachas más hermosas de mi lindo Monterrey.
That was quite something, wasn't it? Uh, one of the characteristics of uh, indigenous music in Mexico is uh, its great sense of spirituality. Uh, music uh, for uh, indigenous peoples of Mexico wasn't always a form of entertainment or, um, or uh, fun and dance. Uh, it was a, uh, a way of, uh, of cleansing the spirit or connecting with the spiritual world. Uh, we are now going to take you to the state of Michoacán. Uh, up in the, in the plains, in the higher uh, area of Michoacán, near the capital of Morelia, there are the territory that was occupied by the Purépecha. The Purépecha are uh, very proud uh, keepers of their culture. They have maintained their, their language and traditions for many years through the Spanish conquest and modern uh, Mexico uh, the, as a nation. And they have maintained their, their status uh, as a, almost as an independent nation. Uh, the Purépecha have a, a, a dance or a ritual where young people uh, will wearing masks uh, uh, representing old people will, uh, will do mischief and uh, summon the rain or, or dance around town uh, drawing laughter from different people. And we're going to perform this Danza de Viejitos, the dance of the old people. Enjoy.
that was quite something, wasn't it? Um, right as you cross the border from Jalisco into the state of Michoacán, uh, we get to this uh, region called the, uh, the, the plains of, uh, of Michoacán. Uh, we follow the river Tepalcatepec into this region, which uh, eventually flows into the Pacific Ocean. But this, this whole plains region uh, is where the style of son called son planeco originates. Um, in this music, uh, which is closely related to mariachi in, uh, in, in character, has uh, a few differences. Uh, we, we see that it retains some of the, the early mariachi uh, forms. Uh, one of them is the use of the harp. The harp was the main bass instrument in mariachi in the early days before the guitarron was developed. Uh, and the planeco music has retained the use of this harp. The box of this harp is so large that uh, sometimes a percussionist will, uh, will come and tap on the surface of the harp. The song we're going to hear today uh, is called El Jabalí, which means the wild boar. Enjoy. Let's go now to the coast of the state of Guerrero. Uh, we continue our journey down the coast of the Pacific, uh, now uh, to the next state, Guerrero and also the state of Oaxaca. We call this the small coast, the Costa Chica of Guerrero. Now, one particular thing about this area uh, is uh, that uh, at one point in the late 1840s, it was populated by uh, a group of people from African descent. Um, in Latin America, uh, slavery uh, of uh, people of African descent was uh, ended at the time of independence, which was in the 1820s. Um, after that, in, by the 1840s, there were um, uh, skilled miners in, uh, in South America that heard about the discovery of a great uh, deposit of gold in California. Uh, we all know about the gold rush of the 1849, uh, which not only drew uh, people from eastern United States traveling across the United States to populate California, but also brought people from China 
and South America who are traveling up the coast uh, to California. Now, all that gold uh, was not uh, found and some of the uh, black immigrants from South America settled in the west coast of Mexico where they found deposits of silver. And uh, to this day, this population has remained uh, in Mexico and now forms one of Mexico's black uh, populations. Uh, we're going to take you to the area of Tixla, which is this striped area over here, about a hundred uh, kilometers in from the ocean. Um, and uh, there's a series of dances where dancers imitate the movements of different animals. Uh, and this is very much done in a style that was imported from uh, the areas of uh, Peru and Chile in South America where they also dance with a, a handkerchief up in the air and they use a very peculiar instrument which is the jawbone of a donkey. This instrument is used by scraping the teeth with a deer antler and also hitting the sides uh, with uh, the fist to make all the teeth vibrate. The name of this song is called La Iguana. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. Apenas ahora empiezo el cibalerón, ahora acabo de llegar. Ahora acabo de llegar al cibalerón. Apenas ahora empiezo ahí sí. Quiero que me des un beso ahí sí, valedor. Ya con esta me despido, la iguanita se acabó. Ya con esta me despido, la iguanita se acabó. Que se acabe enhorabuena como no me acabe yo. Que se acabe enhorabuena como no me acabe yo. Uy, 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 qué guana tan fea. Miren cómo se menea. Uy, 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 qué guana tan loca. Well, we continue our journey now to the state of Oaxaca. This is the next state as we continue down the coast uh, of the Pacific, going south and east. 
and we arrived to this area. This is the, the waste of Mexico. This is the thinnest part between the Gulf of Mexico and the Pacific Ocean. This uh, thinner strip of land is, is called an isthmus or an istmo uh, of Tehuantepec. Uh, this is also the area where the two main uh, uh, mountain ranges of Mexico, the Eastern Sierra and the Western and Southern Sierra uh, collide. Uh, so it's a very mountainous region. And uh, in the Istmo de Tehuantepec, uh, we have a great variety of, uh, of music. Distinctly, the piece that we're going to play right now is uh, based on a legend that is quite well known uh, from Mexico of the weeping woman, La Llorona. Uh, this legend speaks of a, of a woman who's, uh, who committed uh, something uh, terrible in her life and her soul uh, did never uh, ascended to heaven but remained on earth in penance. And at night, her voice is heard uh, weeping for her children. Um, so uh, this song is based on that and we're going to see here um, a, an introduction called the pineapple blossom, the flor de piña, which is played on the flute uh, as an introduction to La Llorona. La Llorona uh, uh, typically would be played with a, with a large brass ensemble, etc. But also we begin to see the use of the marimba. Uh, so we're going to see that. This is called La Llorona. Enjoy.
No sé qué tienen las flores, llorona las flores del campo santo. No sé qué tienen las flores, llorona las flores del campo santo. Que cuando Well, as we travel east and south on the Pacific, we reach the end of Mexico. The last state in Mexico is the state of Chiapas. And uh, up in, the, in this uh, area of Mexico, one of the most iconic uh, instruments in uh, Chiapas uh, is the marimba, uh, this uh, wooden xylophone that has become so iconic of uh, the music of Chiapas. Uh, we're going to hear a special uh, arrangement that was recorded by Sones de Mexico a few years ago. Uh, it's called Feria Chapaneca. Enjoy.
The music from the state of Veracruz is called Son Jarocho, the sound of the Jarochos. And Jarocho is the nickname we give to people and things from the state of Veracruz. Let's take a look. Uh, this uh, region of Veracruz, uh, the state of Veracruz, is a long uh, strip of land along the coast of the Gulf of Mexico. And it includes the seaport of Veracruz, the city of Veracruz, also by the same name. Uh, which has been one of the main uh, 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 seaports of Mexico with contact with people from all over the world. Uh, uh, as any major seaport around the world, like uh, New York, New Orleans, uh, Amsterdam, etc., there are places that are very cosmopolitan and have influences of music from all over the world. So it is to be expected that the music of Veracruz also has uh, uh, Spaniard influences, indigenous influences, African influences, all mixed into a very rich uh, style of music. We're going to uh, share with you uh, one of our um, uh, songs uh, from Sones de Mexico that we recorded a few years ago uh, called El Butaquito. And uh, one of the instruments you're going to see uh, featured is uh, this uh, little guitar called Guitarra de Son. Uh, at the beginning of the song. Uh, you also see our dancer tapping on a wooden surface called the tarima uh, and the, the harp uh, playing uh, a, a lot of this music. So I hope you enjoy this. This is called El Butaquito, which means the little stool.
Well, what a grand finale, right? Uh, this takes us to the end of our music geography of Mexico. We have seen so much variety and diversity. Uh, if there is one takeaway from this whole performance, uh, let it be that Mexico is an extremely diverse country. Next time somebody asks you, do you like Mexican music? Perhaps you should answer, which one?